Hello, this is Daniel from Samdance Couch. Today I'm going to take a look at a very interesting Bluetooth controller called the Manba One. It promises pro features like Hall Effect sticks and triggers, a rechargeable internal battery, a docking station, programmable back buttons, and what really makes this controller stand out from the crowd is that the controller also features an LCD screen. And all that for less than half the retail price of a Microsoft Elite 2 controller. So let's take a look and see what this controller is all about. This is the Manba One controller in its box. The company Manba kindly provided me with this review unit. I'm going to check out how it feels and how well it performs when playing games with it. Everything comes safely packaged in this box and an extra protective film is in place to keep the LCD screen scratch free during transport. The controller feels nice and smooth when holding it in your hands, with the back being textured for better grip. From a layout perspective, it follows the design of a regular Xbox Series controller, which makes you feel right at home if you played with an Xbox controller before. On the back of the controller is an on and off button, trigger locks to make the triggers travel longer or shorter, and four additional back buttons, which I personally always enjoy having and playing with a Pro Controller. In racing games it's really nice to be able to shift up and down with the back buttons for manual gear shifted cars. And in first person shooters it's great to do actions like running or laying down. The controller comes with everything you need. A USB-C cable that you can use to charge the controller and also can be used to play with for a wired gaming experience. You can also charge the controller with its supplied charging dock. What is really neat is that the controller also comes with a USB Bluetooth dongle in case your PC doesn't have Bluetooth. You can also store the dongle in a compartment under the charging dock. The controller comes with two extra thumbsticks that are a bit longer, which is better for racing games while short sticks are better for first person shooters. On the sides of the controllers are RGB lights installed, which you can set to a specific color or let it show all the colors of the rainbow. The upper shell is easily removable and is held in place by tiny magnets. No screwdriver required. This way you can clean and service your controller easily and in the future also get different colored replacement shells for this controller. The controller itself is not super light, but not really heavy either, clocking in at around 288 gram. Compared to a regular Xbox One controller with a battery pack, it only weighs around 20 gram more. And compared to the Microsoft Elite 2 controller, which weighs 342 gram, it is 54 gram lighter. If weight is a problem for you, the lighter Pro Controller can make a difference. Before we can get into the fun of it all, we need to charge the controller first. The display turns on as soon as you put the controller on the dock and displays that the battery begins to charge. There's also a red charging LED on the dock itself, which will switch to a green light as soon as the controller is done charging. The LCD display will also tell you when the controller is fully charged and ready to be used. Now we can play with the internal display functions, which is primarily used to set everything up. Something you need to keep in mind is that you can't use the main controller buttons to select anything on the screen. 
you have to use the plus and minus buttons on the very bottom of the controller instead. First of all, this controller works with Nintendo Switch, iOS devices like iPhones and iPads, Android phones and tablets, PCs as well as the Valve Steam Deck. When using the Switch or a PC, you can also choose if you want to use a Bluetooth connection or if you want the signal to go through a wired connection with a supplied USB-C cord. Unfortunately, the controller doesn't work on PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series consoles. With the help of the display, you can also set up the brightness of the screen and the RGB light settings. You can use many different colors and have them glow steady or have them fading in and out. I personally love the rainbow setting. You also set up the back button keys through the setting menu, which also offers turbo functions. No external PC software is needed for this and is done directly on the controller itself. For the whole effect thumbsticks, you can even select different sensitivity so that the stick reacts faster or slower to the movements of your thumbs. Something geared towards competitive pro gamers. My first test is going to be to connect the controller to a Nintendo Switch. You pair the controller just the way you would pair a Nintendo Pro Controller. And as it is, the Manba One actually shows up as a Pro Controller. On the bottom part of the controller, you also have extra buttons which also features the home and the screenshot button that we know and enjoy in the Nintendo Switch world. I'm playing Mario Wonder and everything feels very snappy. I cannot detect any delay and every jump lands just the way I intended. Next for some directional pad testing, I'm firing up the Super Nintendo game Super Mario World. everything works out of the box, Mario jumps as intended and every input is registered by the controller. Nothing feels janky or off. Especially with jump and run games, you always need precise input and a low latency. The controller also supports gyro controls, which I'm demonstrating here playing the game Fast RMX. Maybe not my preferred way of playing this specific game, but it works and it's nice to have this option. Next is Valve Steam Deck. Quickly paired as a Pro Controller, the Steam Deck has no issues working with the external controller right away. I'm firing up the game Titanfall 2. Everything feels nice and smooth and the game feels as responsive as if I would be playing with the Steam Deck's own buttons.
It is nice to be able to play a first person shooter and feel on the safe side with Hall Effect sticks, not wearing out quickly and not giving you the stick drift headache after playing some passionate matches. Now it's time to test the iOS connectivity. I am pairing my Manba 1 with my M1 iPad Pro. On iOS, the Manba 1 shows up as an Xbox wireless controller. First game I'm firing up is the racing game Grid Autosport, which features console quality graphics. Driving goes smoothly and braking and speeding up works very well with the trigger buttons. Next up is Call of Duty Mobile. Running through Nuketown delivers a console gaming feeling and you definitely have an edge over touchscreen players when you use this controller. Even force feedback works on iOS as well, which I always enjoy very much. Calling in airstrikes with a directional pad works without a hitch and I never miss clicking one while running around trying not to get killed. Now on to Call of Duty Warzone Mobile, which is the latest entry in the Call of Duty Mobile series. It is definitely nice not to have to use the numerous touch buttons on the screen and the whole effect sticks react promptly to all my inputs the way it should be. Just for the fun of it, I tried connecting the Manba 1 to my PlayStation 3 Super Slim that I have recently unboxed on this channel. And guess what? It actually somewhat works. It is not supported by the manufacturer and not all buttons register correctly unfortunately, but technically it does work. Would be cool if there was a software update to make this completely work. Besides supporting the Nintendo Switch, iOS, Android, Windows PCs and the Steam Deck, you are also able to use the controller with Mac computers without a problem. So there are a lot of options and uses for this Pro Controller. Conclusion I had a good time with the Manba 1 controller. The Hall Effect sticks feel nice and responsive. The directional pad and the front buttons work well and are not clicky nor mushy giving you precise control over every jump or punch you do in game. I also always enjoy having back buttons on a pro controller for customized moves like running in first person shooters or manual gear shifting in racing games. Plus having a long battery life with its built in 1800mAh battery gives you many hours of playtime. Having Hall Effect technology makes you definitely feel more confident to play a little more competitive and passionate without having to worry to quickly end up with stick drift. And when the controller does get dirty, you can easily and without tools open it up and clean the faceplate without any issues. To also have 6 axis gyro controls for the Switch and force feedback support, which can be configured in its strength, rounds this Pro package nicely up. And what really makes this controller stand out besides its affordable price tag is that you can configure everything on the controller itself using the internal screen. No need to fiddle around with an extra piece of software. So if you are looking for a controller that has pro features like the Xbox Elite 2, plus even more functionality like an internal screen and RGB lights, I can definitely recommend buying this controller. For around $70 you are getting a lot for your money. But that's it from me today. 
If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to this channel. If you would like to see more of my videos, cool tech reviews and games, it really helps me to make more content for you in the future. Until then, I will see you next time on Sam Dan's Couch. Thank you.